I bring it up, it hurts really bad. So, um, with that being said, I left. I came back. And at this time, I thought I was doing good. I had my own studio apartment on Howard Avenue in Brooklyn. He found me. And this time, he was talking to another female. And um, there was only sexual. You know, it was not the heart, if you can say. You know, he was just sexing her because he wasn't with me. And I remember one day, I had grabbed his phone. Just because it was a new phone. It was one of those... Those phones that have cameras on it and stuff. So I was like, whoa, you know, it has a mirror on it and everything. And sure enough, all I saw was pictures of asses and asses. And I was like, what's this? I thought we was, after this, I thought that we were trying to build. And uh, two seconds later, he was like, yo, I found another chick, whatever, whatever. And I'll take responsibility. I pulled out a knife because I was going to kill him. But taking out that knife, he used it against me. And I remember that he took the knife. And I had it in my hand like this. And he was pushing it into my leg and was like, yeah, yeah, how does that feel? How does that feel? How does that pain feel going into your leg? And I can remember looking down at my leg at the blood dripping down. And I could also feel the feeling losing my leg. So that happened that night. He goes home, leaves me there by myself bleeding. The next morning he comes back and I said, I need you to take my mother. I need you to take me to my mother's house. I'm not feeling good. I get to my mother's house. That's your mama. Your mama knows. My mother was like, that ain't no cut on your stove. Let me see. I was like, I got it on. She, let me see. That ain't no cut on no stove. He hit you, didn't he? And I was like, no, mom. But then, I guess you could say I was spiteful at the time, you know, because he was on the phone with his friends talking about how him and his boys is going to go out with the night, the night before with their boys and chill and everything. And I'm like, Dude, you just stabbed me in my leg, and that's what's on your mind? So I was like, you know what, Ma? He did stab me. So my mother called the cops right then and there. She was like, listen, my daughter has been stabbed, and at this time it's been three days since I've got stabbed and I've been home. So my leg developed gangrene. I lost feeling, and my ankle was green. I couldn't barely walk. The doctor say, and I kid you not, to, to this day, God said that if I came to the doctor later, I would have lost my left leg below my knee. A man, a man did that. But I did it to myself because I stayed. Ladies, when they be like, it's not your fault, you said it is your fault because you should be strong enough in your soul and your heart to be like, I'm better than this. Who do you think you're talking to? Do you know who I am? But it took me a long time to get there. He got locked up or whatever. Press charges. Long story short, because he was an offender first time, he got only a year. As soon as he got out, he looked for me. He looks for me and tells me, I've been messing with other women. I want to be with you. But before I tell you this, I have STDs. You have ABC what? You're going to get your GED. I was like, okay, cool, I'm done. It's over with. And at this time, I'm 150 pounds. I'm looking good. You can barely see the scar on my nose. Nigga, you ain't stopped life. I'm better than I ever was. He had three kids. Met another woman down, down in Texas. He's beating on her. And um, this is 2020. And up to two weeks ago, he told me he's still in love with me. And he still wants to be with me. And... If ladies, if you've been through an experience like me, you know it hurts. Because that would you love me. And you broke me. You broke me. This whole thing was black. Almost 15 years ago, you can still see the mark. And I think that my husband sees it every day. He looks at me. That's why I wanted to make this video without him. Because I'm so appreciative of him for not judging me. And calling me beautiful and gorgeous and loving my soul and my spirit. Spirit, a man takes something from you when he stomps on your face, when he spits on you. Women talking about almost died. I've been stabbed with stab wounds. I had a plate kicked in my face. I had my mouth discombobulated. Now I'm so real. Women need to see this. Look, look. I'm 34 years old. Look at me. But you know what? Do the storm and the pain, guess what? Love prevails. 
and I met him, Mr. Richards. The best thing in the world that's ever happened to me. The day I met him, he said I was the most gorgeous woman he's ever seen in his life. And I said to myself, I am lovable. I just got to learn myself. And the day that I met him, I told you guys in August of 2012, he's never, ever let me go. We have a saying that we both got our Nikes on and we're not letting go. It may be hard this morning. I wanted to kill him. I wanted to kill him 20 minutes ago. We were supposed to spend the afternoon to show y'all our day in the life video. He's out with his friends. But I got to remember, it's not just us. It's depressing staying in here. I don't have many friends, and I'm cool with that. Joyce Meyer, Joe Osteen, uh, James Patterson, T.D. Jakes, those are my friends, you know. I'm looking for girlfriends. Send me some comments, places to go. I go to the library. It's just, I'm, I'm a very hurt woman, but at the same time, I'm healing because I got a great man by my side that's going through the storms with me, and he's going through them with me graciously, you know. And I just wanted that to be an honest story time. Ladies, you are worth it. You are worth it. You are worth it. You ain't worth the man beating on you, telling you you ain't nothing. You ain't worth it. At 34 years old, to still be thinking about a man that you was with almost 20 years ago. Every day I look in the mirror, I think about him. But it's by the grace of God that I say I got a good man that reminds me of who? Who was he again? He don't even see it on my face. It's possible to get good love. It's possibly love. And with that says, ladies, I put a smile on my face because it's time to rejoice. The story time is over. I met the husband of my dreams, the man of my dreams. The day we started talking is the day that we stayed together up until today. Yes, we have our fights. Yes, we've had our agreement. But this man has never had sex with another woman. He's never engaged in a conversation with another woman. He's never even disrespectfully looked at another woman in my presence. I know when I'm going, he probably be like, Damn. But he don't disrespect me. He'll go hungry before me, anything before me. This man get paid and he be like, here, baby, here's our check. That's the type of man y'all need. Leave these losers alone that ain't about nothing but a dollar. Get a man with a plan. My man got a 401k plan. 